Hey guys, we've covered the repricing model in the last two videos, which was the first way to measure interest rate risk. Now we'll be covering the second method, which is the duration model. This is also part of the interest rate risk chapter right after the repricing model. Let's quickly go over what duration is. Duration, also referred as Macaulay duration, is the weighted average maturity of a bond. What it measures is it measures the sensitivity of a bond's price to changes in interest rates. It doesn't necessarily have to be a bond's price, but just any security, but we'll be using bonds in our examples. And that's the formula below. Um, basically the sum of all coupon payments over one plus yield to the power of T, which is your current time period, times one over P, which is bond price, times T. Let's do our first example. So here we need to find the duration of a two year bond with face value $1,000 that pays an annual 10% coupon and trades at a yield of 14%. First of all, let's just write down what information we have. So the question says that the bond is two years. So we'll write here, n equals two years. We've also got the face value, which is $1,000. Um, we've got the coupon rate, which is 10%, but we can figure out the coupon payment straight away. So coupon payment would just be the face value times the coupon rate, which is $1,000 times 10%, which is $100. So C is $100. And the yield or interest rate is 14%. And we just need to find what duration is, or D. Now notice how we're actually missing one variable in the equation, which is P over here. So the tricky part about this question, where many students tend to get confused, is because of the bond's face value. Since the question says the bond has a face value of $1,000, many people just assume that this is the same as the bond's price. But face value and bond price are two slightly different things. Face value is the bond's price when it was first issued. So it was the bond's price at some point, but not anymore. That's because the bond price is going to keep fluctuating afterwards depending on the yield. So before we do any calculations regarding duration, the first step we need to do is actually find the bond price. Hopefully you remember how to calculate bond price from your previous first year finance courses, but if not, I'll just quickly do it over here. So P equals basically coupon payment one, which is $100 over one plus yield um, to the power of one, which is just the first time period. And then plus the second coupon payment, which is a hundred. But since this is the second year, which is the last payment, the last coupon payment of the bond. So we add the face value plus $1,000 and then just one plus 14% to the power of two. And this should give you $934.13. So this is the bonds, um, this is the bonds price. So now if we calculate duration, we've got everything we need. D would be equal to one times, sorry, um, it would be equal to one plus yield, which is 14%, to the power of one, because T is one right now, and the coupon payment, 100 times one over bond price, which is $934.13 times one. And now we need to do this again for the second time period. So it's getting a bit messy. I'll just bring it over here. So plus one plus 14 percent squared 100. And then we add the face value because it's the last time period plus 1000 times Again, 1 over P, and times 2, because this is the second time period. 
And now if we put all this in the calculator, we should get 1.78. So the duration of this bond is 1.78 years. Now one thing to be careful about, which I should have mentioned before doing this question, duration is not to be mistaken for time to maturity. Although the duration of a bond and time to maturity of a bond are related and quite similar actually, they're still not the same thing. This is something we'll talk about more in the next video where I'll be discussing the features of duration and its relationship with things like time to maturity, yield, coupon rate, etc. But in this video we'll just be starting off with some of the more basic calculation questions. Okay, moving on to duration rule. So this is another formula you'll need to know. This one's quite straightforward. It's just a change in price over original price equals to change in interest rate over one plus original interest rate times duration. So let's go over this example. The price of a bond rises from 975 to 995 when the yield to maturity fell from 9.75% to 9.25%. What is the duration of the bond? Okay, so let's have a look at what the question tells us. The question tells us that the bond rises from $975 to $995. So that means the original bond price, or P, is 975, and the bond's risen by $20, which means delta P equals $20. And the question also tells us that yield went from 9.75% to 9.25%. So similarly, original yield, or R, is 9.75%. Sorry, my fives look like sixes, but that's a five. And delta R would be negative um, 0.5%. And it's negative because the yield has decreased. So that's why I always need to remember the negative sign. So now we can just plug these values into the formula. So delta P over P equals minus 1 plus R D times delta R. So we would have 20 over 975 equals minus 1 plus 9.75% over D, which is what we're trying to find, times delta R, so minus 0.5%. And now I'm not going to bother rearranging the equation and doing all the maths, so I'll just give you the answer straight away. D equals 4.50025.